Do I need DBT? First of all, no. No one needs DBT. But there might be some situations and setups where DBT can really help you. In this short video, I want to walk through the different kind of scenarios and the different kind of use cases where DBT can really be helpful so that you can make a decision if you need DBT or if you want to try DBT or if how you work right now is totally fine. What is DBT uh, or actually what does DBT? So in the end, let's make it pretty simple. DBT is orchestrating SQL queries. That sounds a little bit basic, but trust me, if you work on an extensive data model, you have to have a way to run different kind of SQL queries to build this model because it's often like it's a multi-step and it can be a significant multi-step process, so let's say, where you need 200, 300 steps. Hopefully you don't need that because it makes it also very complex. This is something where DBT helps. The problem is like the data doesn't arrive in our data warehouse in the way how we in the end will consume it or will pass it on to other systems to work with it. This is by default because the source systems, how should they know about the million use cases that data can have? And of course, they cannot support it. Source systems like your database, where you run your application on, your service that, that is handling your subscriptions, they have one format how they basically deliver the data to you. And then it's up to you to bring it in the right shape for all the different kind of use cases that you want to do. And here's another problem. You might have multiple use cases with the data. So one would be like simple dashboarding or reporting. Others would be some ML applications. Others would be maybe you feed it directly into some uh, application background systems that is handling some automatic uh, processes. So there's something happening in between where you have to transform the data from its original state to the state where you basically hand it over to other systems to work with it. So for this, you need data modeling or data building. This is why DBT is actually a data build tool. Because like you build data up in, or you shape it up in the way that you need it later on. In the end, there's a lot of stuff going on in between. You load the data, then you store the data. You want to store it in a way that it can handle any kind of future changes and future scenarios. So you want to be really safe, so you make it future safe. Then you apply some business rules uh, on top of it because you have a specific way how you define revenue. So this is like why we in the end might end up with something like 100 queries to do things. To handle 100 queries, this definitely creates an orchestration problem. Because first of all, these 100 queries have to run. Usually like most of the setups run in batch. You have one point in time, usually at night, where you run the whole queries to generate a new update of your data with the data that arrived over the last day so that it's ready when people come in the morning to check their dashboards. You have to make sure that these 100 queries are running and then you have to make sure that they're running in the right kind of order. And this is something which dbt does really well. In dbt, you can basically create references between the different kind of queries. So you can say, hey, query B actually depends on query A, on the result of query A. And so by that, dbt knows, okay, I have to execute query A before query B so that everything works out. So dbt does, does the stuff under the hood because it knows the different kind of relation between the different kind of models. It can help you to give you a better overview, which is then called the lineage graph or the lineage charge. What you can see is, let's say you have a final model that creates a specific reporting table that you use for a dashboard. You can then go through the graph and can see which kind of different kind of queries are basically building up this kind of table. If you really work on bigger setups, this is extremely helpful because you have to find a mistake. So there's something wrong in the dashboard and you have to find out where this stuff is happening. This brings us to another aspect that you can do with dbt. With dbt, you can run tests along the way. And the tests that you can write in dbt usually write in SQL. So it gives you a lot of flexibility what you can do. And I would say the, these tests are definitely powerful enough for your first one, two, three versions of data quality tests that you implement. So you have three use cases which are really good for dbt. So first of all, you orchestrate your different kind of queries. This is the part where you will recognize right now we run five, six queries to transform our data, then there's no need for dbt. Five, six queries you can basically schedule and Snowflake directly, you can schedule them in BigQuery. So no big problem to do that. At some point you will 
get into this problem that the scheduling this becomes problematic because there are too many they're overlapping so one runs longer than you think then is the point where you do orchestrating so the second thing of course documentation so dbt really already gives you a good baseline documentation so you can call it let's say a very simple data catalog that you got out of it which for the beginning will be totally sufficient and then of course you can add some first tests with dbt so dbt is an open source package so you don't really have to buy into it. So in the end, like you, you can, of course, you buy into it when you implement it, but you don't have to buy into it with a contract. So you take the open source package, you set up all the modeling and so on. You can use DBT Cloud, and this would be another episode to, to discuss if you need DBT Cloud, but you don't have to. So you can basically just make sure that you run the DBT yeah, transformation run every night. And so you can deploy it to any kind of server where you can make sure that it runs every night. And that's it. So then you basically update everything. And it has a big community. So you will find a lot of uh, tutorials, a lot of use cases where people share what they do with it. So you have a really big environment of things when you run into, let's say, some problems, if you want to extend something. So you will have a lot of ideas how to do this. Is dbt the only option to orchestrate SQL queries? Definitely not. So of course you can use any kind of orchestration tool. You can use the built-in things from the platforms like GCP workflows. You can use something like Dexter. There are definitely enough cases where you can run everything in a normal orchestrator. So dbt, of course, like it's specialized on handling the SQL queries and also make the, let's say, the references between the SQL queries. And so let's say for, for SQL models, I would maybe then use dbt within an orchestrator, but I would most likely use dbt instead of another orchestrator to do all the SQL handling. But again, if you just have 10, yeah, super fine, just do it. If you already use an orchestrator, you can do it in this kind of orchestrator. To wrap it up, do you need dbt? Yes, of course, N no one needs anything. dbt can be really helpful when you have to run specific kind of SQL queries to model new data, update new data every night. And you cannot do this with manual scheduling anymore. When you have the feeling that you don't run the, the queries in, in the, the right kind of order, they have become too many, um, they take too long, so it's hard to predict how, how long they will run. This is definitely a step where dbt can help you. The second thing is and this comes at the same time. When things become more complex, you need to have a good insights how they are connected. So let's say you have a reporting table that is basically built up by six, seven queries that are running behind each other, next to each other. And so if you start to debug this, you need to have a system that at least can tell you which kind of data is feeding into this final reporting table. And then you might document everything because you may then have one or two people in your team and you want to provide the really good developer experience. And with that, of course, like you have to have a good documentation. DBT makes it really good, especially now with support of AI to s implement a really good initial documentation where people then can easily see things and, and pick up things much faster than before. So if you are small, you don't need DBT. If you are super happy with your current orchestrator, you don't need DBT. I think this should give you an idea if you should start out with dbt or not.